Meanwhile, at least 23 people were killed after gunmen attacked a village in Nigeria's northwestern state of Zamfara. The attackers rode on motorbikes and shot indiscriminately at residents of Kwanar Dutsa village in Maru district last weekend. Investigations have since been launched with authorities hoping to apprehend the perpetrators. No group has claimed responsibility, but fingers point at Islamist militant group Boko Haram, which has spread its tentacles across the Lake Chad basin. Let's get the latest on the developments in Nigeria. CCTV Sophia Dengona joins us live from, from the capital, Abuja. Uh, Sophia, this is not the first time that we're receiving claims that the leader of Boko Haram, Ubakar Shakal, may have been replaced or killed. What more do we know about his status and possible replacement? You know, when uh, Abu Bakr Shakao became the leader of Boko Haram back in 2009, Penina, you know, the difference between he and uh, Muhammad Yusuf, who was leading the group before, is really this idea of propaganda being the face of Boko Haram. He came out charismatically taking on, uh, you know, social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook to really advance the ideology of Boko Haram. Now, time and time again, uh, you know, Abu Bakr Shakao would be the center of these, uh, you know, of these videos that were released. It's interesting to note that back in 2011, uh, the Nigerian government had said that that indeed Abu Bakr Shakao had been killed, only for him to resurface again in these videos. Uh, you know, if you remember in 2014, taunting the abduction of 200 schoolgirls in Chibok. Uh, the last video that, uh, you know, has been released, according to terrorist watchdog groups, is back in 2015, the, uh, around October 27th, in which uh, verifiably you can hear uh, Abu Bakr Shakao. However, if President Mohamed Buhari, being the chief of staff, comes out and says, that uh, they are conflicting reports. There is indeed uh, a grain of truth in that. At the moment, the United States has placed almost a $7 million bounty on the head of uh, Abu Bakr Shakao, along with the Nigerian government, in locating his whereabouts through intelligence efforts and through uh, joint, uh, you know, cooperative efforts through other neighboring countries. But at this time, there have no been any substantiated claims as to whether Shakao is alive or dead. But what we do know at this time is that indeed Boko Haram has been significantly pushed back, especially in the northeastern part of the region. It is interesting to note that uh, the attack that happened in Zamfara in the uh, northwestern part of the country may not necessarily be linked to Shakao, but is indeed linked to some kind of militant activity. Penina. Yeah, let's pick up on that point, Sophie, because of course what you've told us is what the Nigerian presidency has maintained all along, that Boko Haram's capabilities have been significantly degraded. Of course, the president recently claiming that the group is now only capable of carrying out attacks in the vicinity of the Sambisa forest. But let's talk about that Zamfara attack. Um, would this view continue to hold if indeed that attack is proved to be the work of Boko Haram? Well, indeed, you are right, Penina. No group has come out openly to claim responsibility for the attacks in Zamfara. But focusing on Boko Haram, these type uh, of attacks are very familiar to the group and uh, most specific to the Northeast. What we can say at this point is really that Boko Haram has been decentralized and uh, is sort of in these pockets, these cells operating around what is purported to be the Sambisa forest. But it's also interesting to put in light that northern Nigeria is very much a part of what they call the Sahel region, which is, uh, you know, a group of nations ranging from uh, northern Nigeria to Mali, to Chad, Sudan, ranging all the way to the northern part of Somalia, in which, uh, you know, Islamic activity and extremism is rife. So it is, it's not really too far uh, from, you know, what has continuously been believed to be, uh, you know, Islamic activity, whether or not is Boko Haram still needs to be identified. But also uh, keeping in mind that Boko Haram has significantly been pushed back. I mean, the Nigerian military has has been consistent in, uh, you know, in announcing uh, where a, a territory has been taken over. And uh, admittedly, President Muhammad Buhari has said that there are, uh, you know, one or two uh, local governments that still uh, suffer from these repeated attacks. Uh, but what's interesting to also note is that uh, speaking at the African Union meeting uh, not too long ago, the Minister of Defense here in Nigeria asserting that Nigeria's Boko Haram has indeed been completely escalated and that the continuous efforts of not only Nigerian military but the neighboring countries and the international community are really seeing uh, Boko Haram decrease. The interesting note here is these continued uh, attacks, what they call lone wolf attacks, 
box mm. in which individuals go into uh, communities and are able to, you know, detonate themselves with, uh, you know, improvised devices. Mm. But at this point, you know, the activity that happened in Zamfara is a continuation of the fact that indeed Islamic extremism and militancy is still active very much here in Nigeria. Penny now. Right. Sophie, let's leave it there for now. Thanks very much for those insights. Sophia Dengel, uh, life for us there in Abuja.